So I'm gonna come in and we're gonna crank up Wireshark. So one of the issues that we run into oftentimes is somebody calls up and says, hey, I've got, uh, let's see, let's do open a file. So we're gonna open and we're gonna go out to, um, my trace files here. So what I've done is I've got these buffer files that I set up in a ring buffer. Now, the ring buffer. If I come out here and I say T shark minus capital D, and I run that, that's gonna show what interfaces I have on my machine. So we see that interface number one is this ethernet interface out there. So if I say T shark, minus I1, all right? That's gonna start capturing packets on that interface and display that information. And let's come over here. Okay, whoa, holy moly, lots of packets. So let's go ahead and stop that if we can. Uh, well, that's kind of gotten away from me there. It's not wanting to stop. All right, so that's not gonna do us any good to have something capturing like that. So let's go back in. And what I wanna show you is we're gonna go uh, data, trace files. Okay, so let's say I wanna capture for a long period of time. I can come in here and I can say T shark minus I1 minus B. And I could say files. And just for simplicity's sake, we're going to maintain 10 files. I'm going to say minus B file size. And we're going to say, uh, really, again, just so we can see these roll over, I'm going to say 5 meg. So this is measured in. Uh, kilobytes, so we're going to say 5,000. I'm going to say minus W, and we're going to say um, November class dot PCAP. So what this is going to do is it's going to start capturing packets. It's going to put those packets, it's going to create a ring buffer. So if we were to go out and start taking a look at that directory, what we would see is that we're going to see a a uh, file out here called November class, and there's file number one. When we hit five meg on that file, it's gonna create file number two. That's gonna create file number three. Now, once it gets to file number 10, it's gonna go back and erase file number one and put file number 11 in there. So this gives us a way to capture over a long period of time. And that's, that's a pretty nice little feature. Here's the challenge we run into. If somebody has a problem, I can end up spending a tremendous amount of time going back and trying to find those problem packets. Because I'm going to say, you know, Tim, when did the problem happen? Tim's going to say, well, it happened. Now, Tim is a bad example because Tim would be accurate what time he told me because he'd probably write it down. But most people will tell me, well, it happened like last Tuesday around, I don't know, three o'clock. Could be three, could be eight, who knows? So what we want to do is we want to create a very simple means for them to be able to go in and trigger when those packets, ha when that problem happens. So what I'm gonna do is I come out here and I create an icon on their desktop, a shortcut. So I'm going to delete this. We're gonna create a new one. I'm gonna say new, I'm gonna say shortcut. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say ping 12.127.17.72 minus N1. Now, does the ping uh, 172, 17, 72, minus N1. Is that IP address significant? No, that's an AT&T DNS server. It really doesn't matter what address that is. We just don't want our machine to be pinging it all the time. But what I've done is I've said, send one ping to that IP address. I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna say the problem happened. So I put this icon on their desktop that says the problem happened. Now, I'll come out and uh, we're gonna fire up a web browser here. Let's 
crank up YouTube. So all I'm doing is I'm generating some traffic. So when we see our frames over there, uh, we're gonna see some frames going by and um, we've got YouTube coming up and uh, I don't need to translate the page. So, so one of the ones I really like that uh, for generating traffic there, a little Westinghouse documentary, right? So now we're jamming some traffic across there and uh, let's mute our audio. So if I were to come out and look at my directory, what we're gonna see is there's our directory of trace files, right? Those five meg trace files. And it's just gonna keep going through and creating those trace files. And what we're gonna see is as soon as that fills up, it's gonna overwrite that. And we're gonna keep a ring buffer of 10. Now, oh, the problem just happened. So now what I do is I click on that. And we could say, hey, the problem happened. And all we ask of the person that's having the problem is to click on that icon when the problem occurs. Okay, so we'll skip that. We'll jam some packets through there. Problem happened again. So we send those ping packets. Now, I'm gonna come in here and close this. I'm gonna stop my capture. Now, if I say dir no star. Okay, so here's those trace files, and they're only five meg in size. They're not really big. I could go through and open each one and try and find the one where the problem occurred. But what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna say notepad, we're gonna say find trigger.bat. So this is just a little batch file I put together, and I will send this out in the follow-up email that comes out after this webcast. I'll send this out to everyone. But in this case, what I'm doing is I'm saying, I want to search. We're gonna say anything that starts with November, okay? You can change this to whatever you want. You could make this a parameter you fed in. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say echo off. We're gonna say for each file that starts with November and ends with PCAP, look for the IP destination of 12.127.17.72, and then print out the frame number, the frame time, the source, and the destination, okay? We'll save that. So now I'll say find trigger. So what it's doing is it's reading through each one of those trace files, and it's looking for though that particular packet right there. We hope that we find it in one of these in here. Oh, there it is. There it is again. Okay, so there's where we clicked on our triggers. So what this does is it shows us that right here at frame number 4134 is where we saw the trigger. So not only do I know that the trigger occurred in that particular trace file, but I know exactly what time it occurred and I know exactly what frame number it occurred. And I can see the IP address of the device that sent it. Now, we are going, in future sessions, we're gonna talk about doing long-term captures. We're gonna take a look at uh, how we can use a Synology NAS in combination with a tool like the Profit app, uh, Profit Shark, to go in and capture for a very long period of time. But this is a way that I can turn this loose on a directory full of trace files and say, I want you to find the trace files that have a problem. And I could always come in here and say pipe that to trigger.txt, okay? So now if I wanna create a file that's got all those in there, I could now create a text file that contains every trace file, the frame number, the time, and the source IP address of those devices where we saw that trigger occur, okay? So these are, so we're done there, so we could say uh, notepad, trigger.txt, so there's that uh, information about those. So I could say, you know what, none of those had anything, so I could delete those, and I could come down and eliminate those trace files that didn't have part, weren't part of the problem, and now I know exactly what trace files I need to go to and exactly where I need to go look. 